In this clip, I go through some quick steps to install a Docker Swarm in AWS EC2 using Docker Machine and Shell Scripts. Ron says, so I'm setting up a Docker Swarm in AWS GovCloud. Because of policy limitations, I need to do this from scratch by hand. Any guides or suggestions on the easiest way to do so? Okay, so this is a good question. When you say by hand, does that mean you can't create scripts? Is this because you can't bring anything into the environment, even scripts that um, maybe is like um, sort of some top secret thing? I that's a I've no, I've seen where you can't take things out. But uh, it's interesting that you can't take anything in. So if you really have to do this by hand, that's going to um, make it a little more fragile, right? Because then what I would do is I would write scripts by hand to set all this up. And I would write Terraform or I would write, um, let's see, the cloud formation of AWS, right? All those different options you have. But if you just want to install, if you just want to create EC2 instances, install Docker and install Swarm, then it's not that much work, right? If you look at my, um, dogs versus cats, I have an example here on using Docker machine to set up EC2 nodes. Well, you don't have to, it's not necessarily specific to EC2 nodes, but you can use Docker machine to create EC2 nodes. That is probably the easiest way to do it. There's a shell script in here. Uh, so I will throw this into chat. as well. So go check out that sample script. But essentially installing Swarm, you know, yeah, we're talking about this down at the bottom. If you're just installing Swarm, it's the easiest orchestrator to install, which is follow the, the Docker guidance on Docker's documentation on how to install Docker, the latest version, on your specific server. Then making sure that the firewall ports are open. That's like another key thing. So if you just search Google for um, Brett, Fisher Swarm Firewall, you'll probably find my Swarm Firewall Ports blog article. And that blog article, which I will post for you, is the essential ports you need between the nodes in your Swarm so that it works. And I actually give it here in the AWS Security Group format as well. So it makes a little more sense when you're looking at that page on AWS. And then after that, once you've got Docker installed, then all you're doing is a Docker swarm init, right? So you just make sure that the Docker command works, like a Docker version works. And then you can see here, after I've created my Docker machine, which, so uh, by the way, you can install Docker manually or just have Docker machine, which will create the EC2 service for you based on your parameters and then install Docker for you. Uh, either way is fine. I think if it was me and I was in a uh, gov situation like you're doing, I would probably write all this down in a shell script and run that shell script, not using Docker machine, but creating EC2 instances with the AWS command line and then installing Docker with the appropriate permissions. That, that way, when you need a new server, an additional server in your swarm, you already have your method for doing it, right? And you just run that script. And that's, to me... Re reproducibility and having the consistency of reproducing your builds, that's a key feature of getting to infrastructure as code, which is one of the things we do in DevOps. So if you're trying to get more of this into DevOps, you definitely want it to be reproducible over and over again. And you want it to be shareable so that someone else in your team can do the same thing you're, you did without having to just read uh, notes on a notepad, right? And th so the other thing here is it's just a one-liner to create the swarm and te technically it's just docker swarm init now if you have multiple nicks you're going to need to specify the ip of the nick you want to use or the nick itself so this is a little more complicated of a script because it's using docker machine to create a bunch of machines and then automatically link them together in a swarm making the managers and that sort of thing right so really it's docker swarm init and when you do that init you can specify whether it's a manager or a worker, you can change that option of manager or worker later. And that's it, right? After you've done that, obviously there's a little more, a few things like you're going to use storage. You probably want to look at something like Rexray for storage. And so you have to install that storage driver. But the base 
of installing Swarm is as easy as it can be. It is create the servers, create the security group, install Docker, do Docker Swarm in it. And there you go. Hopefully that helps. Um, you, if you've taken either one of my courses, my Swarm Mastery or my Docker Mastery, that setup is in there and it is exactly the same setup that you would use in AWS if you're gonna do it yourself. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to click subscribe and the notification bell if you want to know when I go live every week to talk about Docker and DevOps and take your questions. I also have other videos over here, or you could just go try to solve that Rubik's Cube you got at a conference last year. <laughs>